Hi, this video will go through some depreciation examples as part of a recurrence and financial maths review. Before we get started, just having a quick review of the rules that are involved here. So with our depreciation, remember there are three main types. The first two are linear. So we have flat rate depreciation and unit cost depreciation. And in both cases, the rule is actually exactly the same. The only difference here is that we're giving you if you are told the um, depreciation as a rate, so let's say 10% per year, you would use that um, to work out what the actual depreciation amount is per year. Unit cost obviously is per unit of use, so the same amount coming off the value each time. The, the third type is um, geometric, a reducing balance depreciation. And so that is a percentage of the current value of the particular item. So just a reminder there, and sometimes that little calculation is given as R times VN. And the key thing to remember here is that it, we're subtracting, we're reducing the value each time. Okay, the first example we've got here is looking at modelling some reducing balance depreciation. So we're told that the recurrence relation can be used to model the value of office furniture where we have a purchase price of 6,900 um, and the reducing balance rate of 7% per annum. So we can see both of those values modelled there. Remember that the 0 0.93 comes from our R value of 1 minus 7 over 100. So that gives us 0 0.93. Okay, so part A, use the recurrence relation to find the value correct to the nearest cent after one, two, and three years. So all three values. Now, generally, if they want you to show the working, you'll be told to, um, to show, but here it's probably enough that they've said use the recurrence relation to find. And so a reminder there, we always must start by stating the initial value, even though it's not particularly asked for. And then V1, we're using the rule. So 0 0.93 times the previous value, so 6,900. And in that case, we'll get um, $6,417 total. V2. We repeat, so 0 0.93 times the previous value. Okay, so 6417. And we get $5,967.81. And V3, again, 0 0.93 times our previous, 5967.81. And we will get $5,550 and six cents. Part B then asks us to determine the value of the invest. When will the value first be less than $5,000? So it's worth jumping across to our calculator here to um, show you how we can do that. Okay, so a quick reminder, when we're doing recurrence relations with our calculator, um, our first step will be to put in our initial value and press enter. So we're storing that as the answer that we're going to use. And so our next step, 0 0.93 times, and then we're going to pick up and use our answer rather than typing it in. So that gives us after one, after two, and after three years. So they're the values that we've written down for part A. And then following on part B, less than 5,000. So at the moment we've got after three years, four years, five years. So when will it first be less than 5,000? That will be after five years. Okay, and then finally part C, we've given a different uh, set of scenarios there. And so if the, uh, write down the recurrence relation, if the initial value was 7,500 and it was depreciating at a rate of 8.4% per annum. So again, remember we're always writing our initial value VN plus one, R times VN. In this case, R will be one minus 8.4 over 100. So that gives us a value of 0 0.916. And so putting that together, initial amount 7,500, VN plus one will be 0 0.916 times the n. 
Okay, so our next example here, just a nice straightforward one, taking some information and putting it into a recurrence relation. So a new car purchased for $24,000 in 2014. So there we've got our initial amount. Um, the car's depreciating by 20% of its purchase price. Okay, so that's the important bit purchase uh, of its purchase price. If you weren't given the format, that is the thing that tells you it's from the initial amount. So therefore it is a flat rate of depreciation, not a reducing balance. Um, and so now using that format, our V0, our initial amount, 24,000. And VN plus one will be VN. And now we have to work out what our value of D is using this little formula. So in this case, we have 20% times our initial purchase price of 24000 And so each year, um, it's depreciating by uh, $4,800. And so just putting that in there, minus $4,800. And there's our rule. Okay, so following on from that same example, um, now we're using flat rate depreciation as given by the rule we created. Um, part A, use the model to determine the value after two years. Okay, so for part A, we are finding what is the value of V2. Now, obviously, in order to get that using the um, recurrence relation, we need to find V1 first. Okay, so either by jumping into our calculator or just writing out our steps here, V0 is 24,000, V1 will be 24,000 minus our 4,800, and so we get 19,200, and V2, again, that value 19,200 minus 4,800 gives us our final value $14,400. Next part, part B, in what year will the car's value depreciate to zero? So when will it actually be zero? So here you've got the option, either switch to a general rule. Okay, if you have to solve for um, a value of N, we can flip it to a general rule. Or we can try our luck with the calculator and count. Okay, so if we were to go general rule, what we would be looking to do Vn, in this case, will be the initial amount, 24,000, minus our depreciation amount, so D, 4,800, times N. And we would be saying, when does this equal zero? So setting up an equation so that we can solve for N. Okay. Alternatively, in our calculator, we can try our recurrence relation and see how long it takes. Okay, so in our calculator, if we're starting with our um, 24,000 minus our 4,800 each time, so it's up to one, two, three, four, five years. In five years exactly, we will get to a balance or a value of zero. Alternatively, if we were to solve that little equation, so just going in to pick up solve, when is our value equal to zero? And we said 24,000 minus 4,800 times N, we're going to solve for N. So again, we get five years there. So either way, we'll give you the same answer. Depends on which one you feel is quicker for you in that moment. Okay, and just stating our answer there as after five years. Okay, our next example, another one where we are just taking some information and putting that into our recurrence relation form here. And so the gardener has purchased a lawnmower for $2,700, so that's our initial value, and it's depreciating $3.50 for each time it's used. So that is what our unit cost depreciation is. So representing that as a recurrence relation, our initial value is $2.70, the value um, in the next, after the next use, is the current use minus $3.50. Okay, so unit cost is pretty straightforward following that same linear style. Okay, so following on from that example there, now we're going to do some work with our rule that we've constructed. And so part A, use the model to determine the mower 
the value of the MOA after it has been used three times. So in this case, we're looking to find V3. Okay, so again, V0, 270, V1, we're subtracting that $3.50. So we get 266.50. V2, that previous value minus 350 again, we get 263. And then finally, V3, 263 minus 350 gives us a value after three years of $259.50. Okay, how many times can it be used until it's depreciated a value is less than 250? So again, following that same pattern, that same idea, we can either jump into our calculator and press enter, count how many times the, the lawnmower has been used, or we can um, flip to a general rule and solve that there. Okay, so again, if I was going to change to a general rule, my general rule is always VN equals the initial value, so 270 minus the depreciation amount times N. And we're solving for N, letting it equal 250 in this case. But if we were to jump to our calculator, and so here in our calc, 270, and then we're subtracting 350 each time, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So after five uses, we are still above $250. After six uses, we drop below. So it's really important you check the wording of the question. How many times can we use it before it depreciates to less than 250? So we can use the lawnmower five times. Okay, so sometimes we want to say, um, give a bit of information around why we've selected that the answer is five times. So just here showing V6, V5, and then therefore justifying our answer that we can use the lawnmower five times. Okay, in this example here, we're going back to some flat rate depreciation. Um, just one small error in this example here, that should be minus, not a plus. We are depreciating, so losing value. So we're looking at um, the value of furniture after n years. So what was the initial value and how much does it decrease in value each year? So just reading off um, the equation, I guess, or the recurrence relation. So part A, we would say our initial value is $12,000 and we are depreciating by that $1,200. So 1,200 per year. Write down a rule for the value of the investment um, after N years. So write down a general rule. And much like what we've done in some of the previous examples. So VN equals initial value, $12,000 minus the depreciation amount. So 1,200 times N substituting those values in. And so now part C uh, is asking us to use that rule um, to find the value of the investment after six years. So this is asking us to find V6. So we're literally substituting in six for the value of N. Okay, so V6 will be $12,000 minus 1,200 times six. And so our value after six years, $4,800. Part D, how long does it take for the value of the furniture to decrease to zero? Now here, we've already got a general rule created, so we may as well use that. And so what we're trying to find is when is the value equal to zero, and we're going to solve for N. Okay, so sometimes it can be handy to actually write down mathematically, what are you going to do? So our equation zero equals 12,000 minus 1,200 times N, and we're going to use our calculator to solve for N. In that case, we get 10. So therefore, um, it will take 10 years. Always good to write it as the um, in the unit so that you can do a final check and make sure that you're on the right track. Um, finally, photocopier in the office costs $6,000 when due, it depreciates at a flat rate of 17.5 cents, 5% uh, each year. What is its value after four years? So this is asking us to do a couple of things. 
Firstly, we need to create a rule. And then secondly, we're going to use that rule to find the value after four years. And so our first job is to find that value of D. And so in this case, D, our initial value, $6,000 times 17.5 over 100, gives us a depreciation amount um, of $1,050 per year. Um, putting that into a general rule so that we can jump straight to after four years, so VN, initial value, 6,000, minus the depreciation amount of $1,050 times N, meaning that when we want to find V4, substitute in that value of 4 for N. So 6,000 minus $1,050 times 4 gives us a value of $1,800 after that four years. Okay, and our final example here is looking at um, unit cost and again, switching to a general rule style so we can do some solving. So we have a hair dryer in a salon was purchased for, so we've got our purchase amount of $850 and it's depreciating by 25 cents for every hour it is used. So be careful, we need our values in the same units. At the moment, we've got one in dollars and one in cents. So our depreciation amount here is actually $0.25, okay, 25 cents per hour of use. Okay, so part A, find a rule um, to show the value after N hours of use. So we want a general rule there. And so in this case, our value will be initial value, so $850 minus our depreciation amount times N. Part B is now use that rule um, to find the value after 50 hours of use. Okay, so what is our value after 50 hours? So 850 minus 0 0.25 times 50, and that gives us, gives us our uh, value of $837.50. Okay, part C. On average, salon will use the hairdryer for 17 hours each week. How many weeks will it take for the value of the hairdryer to halve? So there's a couple of ways we can approach this. Um, at the moment, our unit cost, our units are every hour of use. So we can either switch now to go and make our units um, weeks. So 17 hours per week would be 17 times that 25 cents or 0 0.25 to get our depreciation per week. The other way of doing it is find out how many hours it takes for the value to half and then work out well what is the equivalent number of weeks that is. So I'm going to do it the second way. So in this case, first thing we need to know, what value are we aiming for? So we want to know, well, what is this halved value that we're aiming for? And so that is the initial $850, halve that. So we're aiming for a value of $425. And we're going to set up our rule. So we're going to find when is our value 850 minus 0 0.25 times N. When is that equal to 420? And so when we solve for N, we're going to find that that is after 1,700 hours of use. And so if we're using the hairdryer 17 hours a week, how many weeks is that the same as? So 1,700 hours of use over 17 hours per week tells us that we will be able to use it for 100 weeks before we reach that value of $425. Now, if we weren't sure, we could go back and substitute in that $1,700 into our VN formula and check the value. Okay, but just reading it back through, does that make sense for what we've got? Okay, that's it for the depreciation examples. Good luck.